Hey everyone, I'm Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com and lately it really seems as though you can't turn on the news or go on social media without hearing about sexual harassment or sexual assault, unwanted gropings, or just some dude sliding into women's DMs with a fresh crop of dick pics that nobody actually asked for. And of course, whenever any woman says, hey guys, maybe please don't do this, you hear, but how are we supposed to know from all of the usual corners of the internet and from the comment section? A lot of people out there really worried about gray areas and misunderstandings. Standings. Although, in fairness, there are a lot of people who are legitimately worried about reading things wrong, they're worried that they're going to pick up on the wrong signals, make a horrible mistake, and get branded with the Scarlet R. The thing is, avoiding those gray areas and miscommunications are really easy. You just use your words. You ask for consent from your partners. And a lot of us don't do this. We tend to think of asking for consent as something awkward and uncomfortable and weird. That is, if we even know what asking for consent looks like. This is because, quite frankly, most of us never got any sort of real meaningful education into what consent is. We grew up not having really heard about asking for consent until really until our 20s or our 30s. And by then, we'd gotten a whole lot of lessons about how our consent just doesn't really matter anyway. Son, son, I'm telling you, go over there, go over there and give your Aunt Martha a kiss. I don't care that you don't want to. Oh, she has come a long way and she has family, so you're going to go over there and give her a big old kiss. Go do it. As it is, we never learn how to ask for consent because we've gone through a lifetime of being told we don't need to and we shouldn't want to, that asking someone for their consent is the least attractive thing that a man can do, and that real men just know how and when to just go for it. Worse, we're taught that it's ugly, and that it's awkward, and that it's unsexy. And this is how we end up with all of these horrible miscommunications. I thought and you, so I... Moreover, we treat asking for consent as though it's a joke. We make fun of people who ask for it by saying things like, so can I kiss you here? Can I, can I kiss you here? Are you sure? Can I touch you? Okay, well, first of all, works well enough for Billy Ocean. More to the point, that's not what asking for consent looks like. This is how we end up with people who think asking is weakness, and so we get a bunch of people who misread signals and don't understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing. So instead of dealing with bad comedy, let's talk a little bit about what consent actually is and how you can ask for it in the moment. Most of us grew up hearing that no means no, which is a critical part of asking for enthusiastic consent. But it's not the only part. When you have a strict system of only talking about respecting no's, you inadvertently create a system where people are trying to avoid getting a no. After all, she can't say no if you don't ask her in the first place. Consent is about getting an active and enthusiastic yes. Not just a, yeah, or I guess so, but a definite hell yes on top of respecting a no. You want a partner who is into this as much as you are. Despite the stereotypes, asking for consent doesn't have to be this awkward affair. In fact, it can be pretty damn hot if you put even a little bit of effort into it. There are more ways of asking for consent than just kind of sitting there awkwardly going like, um, so can I? Although there are a lot of women who find that combination of shyness and adorkability to be insanely hot. When it comes to asking for consent, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a question. Yes, you can ask for a kiss, and many people do with great success, but you can also weave it into your flirting and make it more of a statement of intent or desire. So while you're on a date at an emotional high point, you can look them in the eye and say, I want to kiss you so badly right now, or I'm trying so hard not to kiss you. You might also make it a bit more of a tease and a bit more of a challenge if that's your flirting style. You might say something along the lines of like, you look like you want to kiss me. I didn't say you could, I just said you look like you wanted to. 
Or if you're a little more on the shy side or the less assertive side, you might say something along the lines of, this feels like a time when we're supposed to kiss, huh? Or this feels like a moment that's right for a kiss. You can even borrow from the classics. Although you need kissing badly, that's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often, and by someone who knows how. I've used all of these to great success, and it's all about picking the moment, delivering the line as seductively, or as teasingly, or as playfully as works for you. This approach works well for more than just asking for a kiss, by the way. Asking is how you make sure that they want to sleep with you as badly as you want to sleep with them. Now, a lot of people worry that asking for consent ruins the mood or throws people out of the mood. And honestly, when you're really into someone, it's hard to ruin the mood. Awkward stuff happens during sex all the time. Someone farts at the wrong moment. You knock stuff off the nightstand. The dog gets into the room and doesn't want to leave. Clothing gets stuck. You say the wrong thing. You snort. Most of the time, all that happens is you laugh and you keep going. And yes, you can just straight up say, do you want to go to bed with me? Again, worked out for a couple of popular songs. But as with asking someone for a kiss or to kiss you, you can make it part of the seduction. You can make asking for consent something that just makes things hotter and sexier. You might say, do you want to move this to the bedroom or maybe we should take this to the bed when the making out gets hot and heavy. Or you might say something along the lines of, do you like this? Do you want more? What do you want me to do? I want you to tell me exactly what you want me to do to you. Or you might, in the middle of doing something, stop, give them that mischievous, sexy look that you do so well, and then look in the eyes and say, may I? If you treat asking for consent as part of the fooling around, as part of just what you do when you're making out, it doesn't feel stilted or awkward. It feels natural. It feels like it's just part of the dance between the two of you, making sure that you're both keeping up with one another and both enjoying what you're doing. Now, it's important to remember Consent is granular. A yes is not all-encompassing. The fact that somebody said yes to any one particular act doesn't mean that they have also said yes to everything that follows. You want to check in with them and make sure that they want to do these other things as well. By the same token, a no isn't necessarily all-encompassing either. Someone may not necessarily be interested in penetration, but that doesn't mean they may not be interested in other forms of fooling around. And being able to ask someone what they want and what they don't want is important. It keeps everybody on the same page. Just as importantly, consent can be withdrawn at any time. John Oliver famously said, sex is like boxing. If both people didn't agree to it, then it's a crime. By that same metaphor, when someone has decided they're done boxing, if the other person keeps hitting them, that's assault. So it's important to check in with your partner. Do you like this? Do you want to keep going? Are we good? Again, make it sexy. Make it just part of what you do. The more that you get comfortable with it, the more natural it'll feel, the more the two of you will just roll with it. Consent can be damn hot when you want it to be. Critically though, while you want a yes, it's important to remember a no is a solid no, and no one has to explain, no one has to rationalize, no one has to justify their no. A no is a complete sentence. And there is a lot out there, especially in pickup artist circles, about what to do when someone tells you no. Whether they call it dealing with last minute resistance or overcoming anti-slut defenses, it's all frankly coercive as fuck. Under the best of circumstances, you end up with bad sex that leaves your partner feeling used and cheap and dirty. Under the worst, well, don't. And yes, I know there's a lot of crap out there about, well, some women say no when really meaning yes, or some women will say no because they want to see how badly a guy wants it and is he going to fight for it? And frankly, that's horseshit. No one is saying no, hoping that you're going to just keep pushing at them. And in the event that you do happen to run into this unicorn who just wants you to ignore her when she tells you to stop and just force the issue, you're better off taking no at face value and leaving it there. If they get upset, fine, they can learn not to play mind games next time. The consequences of being wrong are just too damn high. And that goes both ways, by the way. Just as you want a yes from your partner and to respect their no, you want a partner who looks for your yes and respects your no as well. Someone who doesn't respect your no is someone who you should be kicking to the curb as soon as humanly possible. Yeah, I know, when things are going hot and heavy, 
it can be really hard to stop. And there is going to be that part of you that's gonna think, well, is it really that big of a deal if we just keep on trying, if I try to push a little bit further? And yeah, it really is. The thing to remember is that if you want a yes, then you have to give your partner reasons to want to say yes. And respecting their no is a very big part of that. Trust me, no one has ever missed out on sex because they were willing to respect a partner's limits. But you definitely will if you don't. Keep in mind, Feeling safe is an important part of attraction. When someone knows that you're going to respect their boundaries, when they know that they can call it off at any time, when they can say, please stop, and they know that you will stop, they're gonna trust you. They're gonna feel comfortable with you. And when they feel comfortable with you, when they trust you, that's when they're gonna to wanna to take things further. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. So I know asking for consent can feel a little bit weird, it can feel a little bit awkward, so I have created a free worksheet for you. Links are in the show notes below, so go check it out, get your copy. Like I said, it's free, go ahead and check it out. Meanwhile, the, what is the best way that you've ever asked someone for a kiss or that someone has ever asked to kiss you? I wanna hear all about it, so tell me in the comments below. Don't forget, if you've got a short dating question or a topic you wanna to hear me cover on here, then either leave it in the comments or hit me up at doc at drnerdlove.com with the words for YouTube in the subject header. If you've been digging the series, hit the thumbs up button, let me know, share it with your friends, tell them all about it. If you've been really digging the series, you've been getting a lot from it, it's been really helping you, then consider supporting it by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 a month is a huge help. If you want more dating advice, I've written some books, you wanna read them, Again, links are in the comments below. And if you do check them out, then do me a huge favor and leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. That is probably the best way to say thank you to any author. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at, at @drnerdlove. Join the Facebook page, facebook.com slash drnerdlove. And of course, hit the logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will be back with you next week with more about love, sex, and dating. Later.